Master Suyu, can't you keep her steady? Try, sir. It's these time waves. Or did someone put their boots in the clothes dryer again? I'm wearing my boots, Captain. Oh. Captain Croc, we've got to get out of these time waves. They're tearing the ship to pieces. Come, come, Mr. Stouch. If it were that dangerous, don't you think Mr. Spot would have mentioned it? Oh, the engineer is quite correct, Captain. I estimate the second prize will explode in 7.3 minutes. 7.3 minutes? Why didn't you say so? I knew if I did, you would start panicking like a frightened hamster. Frankly, Captain, I find your displays of emotion most distasteful. Distasteful? Listen, mister, it is your duty to make me aware of every possible threat to the second prize. If you insist, Captain. I certainly do insist. As Captain, I'm responsible for the well-being of over 400 men and women. When they are in danger, I need to know about it. Do I make myself clear, mister? Painfully. I have to remain laser-focused. I... There's no smoking on the bridge, mister. S sorry, Captain. Who's been barbecuing on the bridge? Over here, Doctor. How is he? He's a briquette, Jam. Is there anything you can do for him? And can you do it quick? The ship's gonna explode in seven minutes. Five minutes, Captain. Er, five minutes. I'm gonna have to risk some carjacodicodazine. Carjacodicodazine? It's the most dangerous drug in the galaxy. Luckily, I carry a dozen hypos of it in my kit. We are about to hit a large wave, Captain. Thanks a lot, Spot. Murderers! Assassins! Politicians! Great Scott, he's gone Kodra Cody Coconuts! Security, restrain Dr. McGrath. Assassins! Killers! Oh, my. Space. Rooms available for rent. These are the voyages of the Starship Second Prize. It's really vague mission to fly around looking at stuff, wasting taxpayers' money, and overinflating the egos of its officers. To badly go where no man wanted to go. Because. Captain's log. Stall date? One of those days. I am taking a landing party down to the planet to find our doctor, who is all hopped up on space dope. Fascinating, Captain. There is a great city over the horizon, with enormous buildings and giant, nine-foot-tall statue-like beings. It appears to be older than the galaxy itself. That's an interesting spot, but let's go look at the stone donut instead. Everyone, fan up. No selfies. Oh. Dr. McGruff must be around here somewhere. Unless he's gone to that far more interesting city on the edge of... Enough of that spot. I'm the captain, and we're not going to rush our way to the planet. Now, about this stone donut. Is it possible there's something inside of it? Like strawberry jelly? That is a question. I know it's a question, Spot. I want answers. Since long before your world was new and then white was young, I awaited the question. A talking donut? And you wanted to go look at old statues. Are you jelly filled or plain? I am both and neither. I am so advanced that your primitive minds cannot begin to fathom how awesome I am. Analysis spot. 
I believe the displacement waves that affected our ship millions of miles away were all caused by this thing's enormous ego. Behold, through me you can experience all that there is and all that there ever was. I'm flabbergasted, Mr. Spock. Yes, it is impressive to be able to view all of this living history. No, I'm flabbergasted that NBC would allow him to show it in black and white. We're the full color now. You had an adopted sister that started the war with the Klingons! That can't be good. It is done. History has been changed. What you once knew is no more. The pooch has been screwed. Captain, I can't reach the second prize. It's like our ship is gone. And I was right in the middle of binge-watching Game of Thrones. Then we're all alone. Captain, we must attempt to go back ourselves. We must find McGruff and stop him from doing whatever he does that changes time. Go into that machine? We'd be all alone. Please, Captain. That special effect is very expensive. Oh. If you succeed, it will be as if nothing ever happened, making this entire episode a complete waste of time. Good luck, gentlemen. We're all counting on you, Captain. I really hope they don't make it any worse. Of course. Report, Mr. Spot. We're on Old Earth, Captain. New York City. I can tell from the excessive sunshine, moderate temperature, and the hills appearing behind all of the single-story buildings. Time travel. Just think of it, Mr. Spot. Imagine this rare opportunity that only we have. Rock Colbert and Jimmy Derrick do it every Friday night on ABC. Oh. We've got to find out what Dr. McGruff changed and stop him from doing it. Operation Dot Block. We're going to need more appropriate clothing. Look, that laundry on the fire escape. This should do the trick. We'll blend in perfectly. Uh-oh. He's probably stopping us because of your weird eyebrows. I can explain this. You see, my friend... A lucky escape, Mr. Spot. I again remind you, Captain, that released on our own recognizance is not the same as escaping. Tomato, potato. We'll be long gone before our court date. Who's down there? Don't be alarmed, miss. We're just looking for a place to come in from the cold. My name is Jam Croc, and this is my friend, uh, Twinkle Toes McGurk. Typical. I find her most intoxicating, Mr. Spock. Please, Captain. Try to stay focused. Our mission is to save the future. Not to satisfy your... Shh, Spock. I think she's about to say something meaningful and profound. No shoes, no service. As I know you know, times are bad. You are poor. You have no job, no money, no place to live. And you smell simply awful. But I see a future where mankind will have wonderful things and wonderful inventions. I even think one day 
man will go to the stars in some kind of atomic powered spaceship and leave all you smelly poor people behind. Spot, she's predicting space travel. Conjecture, she's a kook. I think she's amazing. Even though I've just met her, I feel like I'm going to love her in a way that I've never loved a woman before. I shudder to speculate what that means. You see things so differently. Well, I have had space LASIK surgery. I mean it. It's like part of you belongs here and part of you is from somewhere else. Is that a toupee joke? I assure you, all of me is here with all of you, all alone. Cheapskates, you have made impressive use of your time, Mr. Spot. Yes, it's amazing how little social life someone called Twinkle Toes McGurk has. Any luck finding out what McGruff changed? I believe I have something. I think Edith Keister is the focal point. You've been stalking my girlfriend on the internet? Something is amiss. I saw an earlier paper that says she was killed this year. Some sort of accident. McGruff? In his whacked out condition, does he kill her? Or maybe he prevents her from getting killed. I need to know how much time we have, Mr. Spot. You have to be sure. I've only made it to second base. Captain, if she must die for the timeline to be restored, you cannot allow your personal desires to interfere. You cannot have your fate and eat it too. Reality TV stars! Whoa, mister. People are trying to sleep. Assassins! Murderers! Network TV executives! Hey, you dropped your electric razor. Guess you won't be needing that electric razor. Your friend, Mr. McGurk, suggested we go to the zoo this afternoon. They have a wonderful exhibit of man-eating tigers. He says they are so close, it's like you could touch them. I'm afraid I'll have to take a rain check on that. I suddenly feel like Mr. McGurk and I need to have a talk. I've walked down those stairs a hundred times. I might have broken my neck. Thank goodness you were here. Yes, you'd think these stairs would be more sa safe, safe, safe. Heavens. Like I said, I think I'm going to have to pass on going to the zoo today. And then I stepped into a bear trap placed under Edith's welcome mat. Clearly an amazing coincidence. I wonder. What have you found out? I can only present the information based on theory and conjecture. My purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones. I am certain that Dr. McGruff prevents Edith Keister from dying. Because of this, she is able to write a book about UFOs that makes her world famous. Invited to the best parties, she accidentally trips on a banana peel dropped by Amelia Earhart and knocks Albert Einstein into a fireplace. Einstein gets such a headache that he mistakenly sends his letter suggesting an atomic bomb to Adolf Hitler instead of President Roosevelt. Oops. Indeed. The Manhattan Project never begins, while the Nazis have no problem developing the A-bomb which they immediately use to bomb Great Britain. 
the incredible force of the blast opens a fissure under Loch Ness, which releases thousands of dinosaurs that had been living within an air pocket miles beneath the Earth's surface. Within months, the dinosaurs spread across the entire globe, eating every man, woman, and child. So if Edith Keister lives, the entire human race becomes dino poop. If only we knew where Dr. McGruff was right now. Assassins, killers, murderers. There's always a nut. The odds of finding one man in a city of this size are astronomical. Hiya, Jim. Bone. And I had this hot dog at Coney Island that was incredible. I hate that truck. You deliberately stopped me. Actually, Doctor, I deliberately stopped him from not deliberately stopping you. No, I ignored you deliberately stopping me from not stopping him and deliberately stopped him deliberately on my own. Deliberately. He deliberately did it. All is as it once was before. Again. What happened, Captain? You only just left. It was 35 years for us. It would have been 18 with good behavior, Doctor. That guy had it coming to him. Miniatures like might make your possible. Just go to www.gardengetaways.com. Let's get out of here.